Hey there, Miranda Wilson here with another fun lesson idea from Science Journal for Kids. Today, we're going to focus on a game that explores the circulatory system. This activity can be done with all ages, but is designed for grades four through eight. The game comes from Ellen McHenry's Basement Workshop, where you can find tons of free scientific educational materials. The game takes students on a trip through the body as a red blood cell. Their objective is to be the first team to deliver all the oxygen and food to the cells, waste to the kidneys, and carbon dioxide to the lungs. There's some setup gluing and coloring to create your body game board, but you could even make that a lesson by challenging students to figure out which colors go where and naming the organs that are shown. There's a spinner to set up as well. The directions have some hints on how to set it up, but I just used a paper clip and it worked fine. Once you're finished setting up, each team gets five red blood cells to play with. They have to enter the game board on the red blood cell icon in the femur. This is a game of exchange, and it would probably be helpful to write the goals and exchanges on the board for reference. For example, a red blood cell needs to go to the lungs to pick up oxygen. Once the red blood cell arrives at one of the cell locations in the hands, feet, or brain, it exchanges that oxygen for a carbon dioxide. The oxygen token will remain near the cell for the rest of the game. It's effectively used up. Then the carbon dioxide needs to be taken to the lungs. It's the same idea for the sugar and protein tokens. They need to be picked up in the intestines and then carried to the cells. Once there, they're exchanged for waste, which needs to be taken to the kidneys. Once the waste gets to the kidneys, it is effectively dealt with and can't be picked up again. Again, the first team to deliver all the oxygen and food to the cells, waste to the kidneys, and carbon dioxide to the lungs wins. Some helpful hints. One, be careful moving around the heart. There are lots of twists and turns. Two, you can have as many red blood cells in circulation as you have game tokens. If your red blood cell moves through the lungs with a food or waste token, it cannot also pick up an oxygen token. Three, red blood cells can only carry one thing at a time. And four, there's a great intro to the game and the instructions that you can read to your students. It does a good job talking about the game as a simplified model and highlighting some of the ways your bodies are much more complex. Your students are sure to have fun working together to figure out the most efficient paths through the circulatory system and learning about some of the roles of the circulatory system in our bodies. This circulation game would go great along with our article titled, How Do Glass Frogs Become Transparent? Which could be used as a reading extension after the class. Researchers discovered that glass frogs have near transparent skin and muscles when they're asleep. This camouflages them from potential predators. It turns out that in order to achieve this level of transparency, more than 90% of their red blood cells are stored in the liver while they sleep. The liver is surrounded by millions of nanocrystals that reflect light, making the liver almost like a mirror and effectively hides the red blood cells. Future research on how frogs store and release their red blood cells could help us better understand blood clotting and how to treat clotting disorders like deep vein thrombosis and stroke. We have other articles about blood adaptations like why can some monkeys live high in the mountains? And if you're looking for articles about camouflage, check out Why Are North American Velvet Ants More Colorful? Don't forget to take a look at our videos at the bottom of the article page when you're planning your class time. There's always a video meant to introduce the topic of the article to your students. For each adapted article, we also provide an audio version of the article being read for those students who might need some extra help with their reading skills. You can access our audio versions on the webpage for each adapted article or on the Science Journal for Kids YouTube channel. That's all for today. If you'd like more teaching tips and ideas for lesson planning, please check out the audio or video versions of our Lesson Ideas podcast. Also, make sure to check out our Ask a Scientist videos for short interviews with some of our researchers. You can find them on our YouTube channel. If you have questions or comments, please share them in the feedback form on our website or head to Facebook to join our official community group.
You can also sign up for our free monthly newsletter to learn more about our latest content. And as always, please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources. Thank you.